one megawatt space reactor, a nuclear reactor in space that's one megawatt? You got to be kidding me. Holy smoke. And China don't want us to know much about it yet. Well, why is that? This is something that might be a bit concerning. Could it possibly be that they have nefarious intentions in mind with this reactor? Where are they trying to go with it? Hi, this is Greg Allison with Galactic Gregs. And we're going to talk about this, guys. Uh, will a one megawatt reactor give China the power to rule space? Well, space is the high ground. How about planet China? Will they rule Earth from space? Wow. You know, militaries do seek the high ground. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is the Chattanooga Battlefield Park from the Battle Above the Clouds, in case you don't recognize from the, the war that wasn't so civil. Ah, but the ultimate high ground, yes, in cislunar space, which is the Earth and Moon, the Moon is it, my friends. It is the ultimate high ground. And we'll, hey, I'm going to be coming back to this and very soon with a new video talking about why we already got to be concerned about China going to the Moon and how China really could essentially rule not just space, but Earth from the Moon. That's going to be a new video. Stay tuned. If you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe, bang the update notification bell, and click all so you can get more videos like that. And I'll show you a few other videos as we click through here, my friends. But uh, this is something I'm uh, really concerned about, and I will be showing more on it in the future. But for now, we're going to stick to the nuclear reactor. According to reports, China uh, has a nuclear reactor des designed to provide energy and propulsion in space, and it successfully completed a comprehensive performance assessment. Basically, it's either like a preliminary design review or a critical design review, maybe a critical design review, because it seems like they're going to be cutting metal. Uh, the Chinese Academy of Sciences designed the reactor, which can produce one megawatt of electricity for propulsion and for electric power for the spacecraft. My friends, this is, this is beyond anything that we've had in space to date by a long shot. According to Space News, Science and Technology Daily, and other sources, this project was approved following the performance appraisal by China's Ministry of Science and Technology on the 25th of August. So this just happened, my friends, just a couple weeks ago. These posts, however, did not mention any technical information about the reactor from the, China, from the Chinese media outlets or any others. So basically, it's been silenced. In fact, they pulled some of this stuff down. Chinese sources revealed in November of last year that they were creating a powerful nuclear reactor uh, for its moon and Mars expedition, supposedly. Two project participants who worked on the engineering design of the prototype machine, so they got the prototype machine, which is beyond a political design review, right? Said it had been finished and some essential parts had been constructed. Would this mean essential parts for the actual reactor itself beyond the prototype? If so, then they are at a critical design and viewpoint, which means they're ready to start building. Is that where we're at? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of details, my friends, that just aren't available. This is shh, hush, hush, too much so. These studies contain no actual proposals for using the nuclear power systems on any real or any real technical information. So that's just it. So they're making a lot of proposals, moon, Mars, here, there. But, you know, it's just, you know, fluffing according to what we're actually hearing from and we're not really getting anything with any substance to it so and get this although the web reports from many publications have since been removed ah the caches of archive copies are still available uh rather sloppy cover up eh? <laughs> ah but see here's it it's 10 times more powerful than the international space station at least american elements according to nasa the estimate the international space station receives only 120 kilowatts of electrical power at most the Chinese reactor has enough to maintain the equivalent of 10 international space stations. My friend, let me explain something. That 120 includes the Russian elements. You see these four big wings we got here on the space station? Each one of those is 25 kilowatts. Uh, the four of them add together to 100 kilowatts. Now, each side is 12 and a half kilowatts. Back in the old space shuttle days, they proposed putting a space hab uh, that flew in the back of the space shuttle with one of these 25, uh, well, actually a 12 and a half kilowatt power module, just one half of it, and leaving it in space as a man-tended platform because we didn't know we was going to have a space station program back then. It was intended to kind of jumpstart us into a space station before the ISS got approved as Space Station Freedom by Ronald Reagan in 1984, I believe it was. So this program has been around for some time, my friends, and I've got to do quite a bit of work on it. But anyway, each one of these, 
wings, up, the upper and the lower together is, this is all one module and on, on each one has a special truss section. Each one of these is 25 kilowatts. Each array, well, pair of arrays here on one side is 12 and a half kilowatts. So 12 and a half and 12, 12 and a half is 25. Four times 25 is 100. So the American element is capable of 100 kilowatts. A one megawatt, a kilowatt's a thousand watts, a megawatt's a million watts. So the, the, uh, this is the biggest facility, most power we've ever put together in space on one platform. It's huge. When you sit fly over at night, it's really bright because of these huge solar rays. So that's just it, guys. This is enormous, and we're talking about something 10 times more powerful. Oh, yeah, they have augmented these arrays recently with some EVAs and some new materials because they're getting old and getting degraded. You know, they're like 20 years old. Okay, guys, so let's, let's go down through here. Uh, the media sites mentioned by Space Views have not provided any technical information or stated why China's looking for such a potent reactor. See, that's a big question. Now, here is a render of the Chinese space station, Tiangong, uh, as it would be looking in late July of this year. And uh, along the left is the Tianhe core module. Well, actually, it's the Tianhe core module. That's in the, really in the, in the middle. The, the Wain, Wain Tain, I can't pronounce all this, lab modules on the left. And they got the Tianzhu cargo module on the right. Okay, forgive me, Chinese, if I've uh, done no justice to your words. <laughs> but I'm trying. And you got the Shenzhou 14 crewed spacecraft at the Nader. Of course, this looks a lot like the Soyuz spacecraft, as some of you might be aware. But it is a little different in the capsule area. It's got some differences to it. They've upgraded it. The whole space station, uh, some people think it's a mirror. Uh, this core module really looks like, you know, the old Salyut space stations and the core of the Mir space station. But these, these other, this module here on the left is quite a bit different. It, it, it is a lot more modern. And if you see photographs from inside of these modules, they actually look nice and clean and pristine. None of the Soviet or Russian uh, space stations ever looked anywhere near like that. And it actually looks cleaner and more orderly than the International Space Station inside. So inside, it's got a really sleek uh, physique. <laughs> But moreover, this thing is actually being, uh, has as part of its complement of station keeping Hall effect thrusters instead of chemical thrusters. So this actually has some new technology on it. So uh, when you see the full complement uh, of China is trying to put together here, it's really astounding. This station by itself, as it exists, is nowhere near needing, and what's it got here, maybe 25 uh, and another 10 or 15 kW on it. It don't have much power you know, at all, maybe 40, 45 kW. This is probably not even that, maybe 30 kW. This is not a very powerful station in terms of electric power yet. So what are they cooking for with 100 kilowatts? I mean, excuse me, one megawatt. Yeah, what are they cooking for? This, my friends, is a mock-up of the Zeus 500 kilowatt space tug. This is half... This, this was astounding us. I did a video. This was astounding because it was five times more powerful than the International Space Station. Well, this new Chinese reactor is twice as powerful as this. And this hasn't been built and flown in space. Now, they've got a model of it here in a museum, as you can see with some rock cosmos stuff here, Russian cosmos stuff in the background, and other Russian and other uh, space artifacts around, guys. But look at this. I did, a, I did a video on this some time back. Go check out this video. Just hit my video section and scroll down or search on Zeus, Russia's new 500 kW space tug reactor. This was a popular video. Check it out. Now, this was the first space reactor, nuclear reactor ever put in space. The SNAP 10A, not 10 ounce. <laughs> I don't think it was 10 ounce, but because it was 30 kW. That was a pretty powerful reactor. It was like almost a third of the power of the International Space Station. That was a very powerful reactor. Now, the Russians later put up uh, more powerful reactors for their uh, roar sets, their radar satellites. So this was a powerful reactor, launched in 1965. I was five years old in the day. Uh, <clears throat> well, for robotic trips to the outer planets, which receive very little energy from the sun, nuclear fission devices can provide high levels of power and electric propulsion. Far from the sun, solar power is virtually worthless due to inverse square law drop off the solar output as one travels away from the sun. For crude missions, nuclear reactors can also supply electricity on the planetary surfaces. So you get electricity, you get uh, a propulsion in space 
and power on the surface of the planet. Hey, Mars, anybody? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, in order to meet the needs of the next missions, senior Chinese space official Wu Weirin, I can't pronounce it, director of the recently founded Tiandu Space uh, Exploration Center, urged for advances in nuclear power for space. Well, they're already doing it. Uh, this one megawatt reactor initiative shows a strong Chinese in producing, uh, interest in producing nuclear power for use in space. Well, that's kind of an understatement, right? <laughs> it was launched, and the project was launched in 2019. Okay, so we're three years into it. Yeah, it could be having a critical design review now as a national strategic research and development program. And they're suggesting missions like Voyager, you know, Voyager. <laughs> Uh, they're even talking about sending uh, two spacecraft toward the nose and tail of our heliosphere, which is the boundary between the uh, solar wind, the solar environment of the sun, and interstellar space. Maybe a third perpendicular plane of the ecliptic. And, and these are among the suggestions that Chinese have for civil nuclear space reactor power missions. Well, excuse me. In the Chinese world, civil and space are, are, are two words that don't exist together because all Chinese space programs are military, run by the military. Ah, so but they also published an idea for a concept for a Neptune orbiter mission that uses nuclear powered uh, electric propulsion. Now Neptune is the farthest out full-fledged non-planet in our solar system. So we've been to uh, Jupiter, Saturn, now we're talking about going to Neptune. What? Skip Uranus? <laughs> ah, like I said, China's program is part of their military. Their space program is militarized. So that's why we got to watch. That's why we did not allow Chinese on the International Space Station, because it was intended to be a civilian-only facility, and their program is part of their military. So that Tiangong Space Station, Heavenly Palace, as they call it, it's a military program. These are things to be concerned about. Everything China does in space right now has a military purpose or dual purpose. So we have to be very wary of where they're going, especially considering their war, wolf warrior stance and the things they're doing in the world today. China has, and I mentioned this here, China has successfully developed cryogenic rockets to support lunar, Mars, and space station projects in recent years, strengthening the space transportation and deep space capabilities. It's currently developing reusable launchers and super heavy lift rockets and a two-stage orbital reusable space plane, which has already flown a couple of times. And by the way, this is the Long March 5 rocket, the version whose upper stages have not been uh, carefully disposed by, by China and always leaves us wondering, where's it coming down? Where's it coming down? We kind of put a watch on because they don't like, unlike the United States, uh, intentionally do orbit in the ocean. They just let that thing fling around. It's just a uh, you know, some kind of little uh, gambling game to see where she comes down. Not a good thing. Anyway, but this is the Long March 5. And this is what they've been supplying their space station with. They're developing a Long March 9, which when developed will be more powerful. Listen, this Artemis 1 rocket, if it flies here, will be the most powerful rocket ever flown to date. If the, uh, <clears throat> at 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, the uh, SpaceX, Starship with a heavy, uh, super heavy booster produces uh, something like 11 million pounds of thrust. Oh, let's see. Yeah, it's maybe 16. Yeah, it's up way up there. It's um, the Long March 9 will be more powerful than all of these. The Long March 9 will be the most powerful rocket flown, and they're working on a fully reusable version of it. So, you know, they're, they're taking a lot of technological ideas from. SpaceX. Well, who would think the Chinese, Chinese wouldn't take ideas from technology from nobody? Oh, yeah. Did you notice that they've come up with a robot? It looks like the Tesla robot before Tesla came out with this robot. Interesting. China is good at that kind of stuff. Uh, and this is my video where I talked about China's plan to leave Spaceship, Starship, and Artemis behind, basically, all these things. Because they, you know, I've had some people say, oh, Greg, China's uh, space program is so ancient, antiquated, they're using no Russian stuff. Well, you better look again, my friends. China is starting to put a lot of initiative out. They're behind, but they're trying to catch up in a hurry. Uh, but hey, we are doing something. The Department of Defense, DARPA, and NASA are all developing designs for nuclear-powered spacecraft as the United States advances nuclear spacecraft plans. DARPA's Draco nuclear-powered spaceship is a potential game-changer. 
Draco is a demonstration rocket for agile cislunar operations. Again, cislunar means space between Earth and Moon. DOD wants a fast and highly maneuverable spaceship with a nuclear thermal rocket propulsion system. Now, nuclear thermal is not the same as what Chinese is in. Chinese are doing nuclear electric. Now, nuclear electric is more efficient, but you don't have as high a thrust. So they're changing uh, trading efficiency. It's far more efficient than using nuclear rec electric rocket. The specific impulse of a nuclear thermal rocket is about 800 seconds of ISP. ISP is pound thrust per pound fuel consumed. Whereas a nuclear electric rocket get up to up from 1,000 up to 8,000 seconds, up to 10 times more efficient than a nuclear thermal rocket, which is at, which is about twice as efficient as our chemical rockets from the ground, just to give you some perspective. Well, not to be left out, NASA's got its own nuclear thermal rocket program, of course. And currently, three contractor teams are working on the uh, NTR concepts for NASA. NASA wants to be able to get crews of ours quickly and minimize exposure to space radiation. You know, uh, maybe Elon will go for a nuclear reactor instead of having, uh, for the upper stage, instead of using chemical uh, aspects of a starship to get to Mars. He needs to uh, get there as soon as possible. This is kind of how the engine of a nuclear, I'm going to be brief, because I'm going to go more into detail on these things in the future. I'll do some rocket uh, videos, rocket engine videos. I'll start with just the very most fundamental, what's a rocket, you know, kind of questions, and we'll build into more complexity. This is a nuclear thermal rocket engine at the simplest level, just showing that they prefer to use liquid hydrogen because it's a lighter molecule, can be accelerated faster. The faster acceleration out the exhaust nozzle gives you higher ISP. And this thing is a regent cool system or the liquid hydrogen, which uh, again, this is the stuff they're having problems with, with uh, the, the Artemis rocket because it's so leaky and so cold in minus 432 degrees. But it's a great cryogenic cooler for regent coolant. If you pump it around the engine chamber and the nozzle and it, some of it can be bled back to run the turbine to pump it. And uh, also then it feeds into the reactor being preheated. And this is your, your reactor elements that heats this stuff up and shoots it out the back, bing, okay. Check this out. This is a video I did on Newton drives. Yeah, all right. I, I took a, just a, a screenshot from a, a channel here. Somewhere I got the thumbnail stored. <laughs> but just get out. Just look for this Newton drive for Space Wars. I did go more into detail on this topic in this video, so I will skip some of the details here. Well, the International Atomic Energy uh, uh, Administration, Deputy Director General and Head of the Department of Nuclear Energy, Mikhail uh, uh, Shudikov said in a statement that the future mission should rely on nuclear powered systems for a much broader spectrum of applications. And the most significant thing he said is our pathway to the stars runs through the atom. So we go to the stars through the atom. At least that's what he's thinking. Now, guys, this is a, a ion thruster. This is what NASA started working on first and foremost was ion thrusters that used a grid at the back to electrostatically uh propel a fuel now the whole idea of a hall effect thruster what was developed initially in america or at least the concept but it's the russians that developed it and we've kind of taken it back and done more development on since but russia really pioneered the hard work on the hall effect thruster now i'll show you the difference now see this is a, a an ion i'm showing these electric thrusters because this is what the chinese would be using this they have a nuclear a, a a nuclear electric rocket, NEP, nuclear electric propulsion. Yeah, NTR, nuclear thermal propulsion, NEP, nuclear electric propulsion. Nuclear electric propulsion is more efficient. You will get more uh, uh, more for the bang on your fuel. And when you got uh, when you got a megawatt reactor, see, that's, that's bigger than what DARPA with the Draco program. It's bigger than what NASA's looking at. That's very powerful. One megawatt. Why are they going for one megawatt? They're trying to, yeah, that's amazing, guys. It's really amazing. And it's a bit frightening also. So all right, this is a grid static ion engine. It's got uh, uh, grids on the back. So what happens is you throw the propellant in, it'd be like xenon. And uh, you've got an electrons emitted here by a cathode. So you got a cathode in here, especially electron gun shooting electrons in this chamber here. Now it's got a little positive grid to try to help hold the electrons in. But once the uh, uh, protons get accelerated, because they got mass and momentum, they'll go through the positive charge and out the other end because they're hunting this electric negative plate out here. Once they get out here, you don't want this beam with something very positive coming back and hitting your spacecraft because then you won't be getting the ejection of it like you want. So they got an electron gun out here 
to shoot electrons into the beam and neutralize it. That's how this engine works. Hope that wasn't too much. Now, the Hall effect, their Hall effect thruster, this is a Hall effect thruster, it's a 6 kW thruster. This thruster was 2.3, you know, about a third as powerful as this one. So this, in terms of electricity use, I assume that correlates to uh, thrust in some manner. So maybe the Hall effect thruster is a little bit more. But the, guys, we're talking about, you know, like uh, milli newtons in thrust, a very low thrust, but very high efficient. So it takes time to build up speed, but you can fire these things for thousands of hours. I think on the Tiangong space station, they've been firing one of these. Wait, where's my diagram? All right, I lost the diagram. I guess I pasted it over. There was a... Basically, this thing works by uh, magnetic fields inside, and it traps the uh, electrons inside a chamber, uh, and uh, it, it doesn't have a grid at all. In fact, it uses just the negative uh, charge out here to bring the protons in. Uh, I, I, I just said I just uh, pasted over the diagram for this. I'll show it again later. So and, well, I'll go into a special video where when I'm talking rocket engines, I'll talk chemical engines, solid engines, and we'll get into the electric motors, uh, nuclear motors, all this stuff down the way. So we'll, we'll cover a broad range of stuff in future videos. That's why I need to subscribe to my channel. That's when, you know, we got a lot of stuff to cover. All right. Well, is it, this is what I'm going to have to talk about in my next video. Why? It's crucial that if China's going to be on the moon, that we're there too, every bit as much. And as soon as they're there, we need to be there, if not before because there is a military component to this that uh, is a bit shocking. I'm going to discuss that. This is a picture diagram of the idea of a mass driver. That's critical to what I'm going to be talking about in my next video on this topic. It's coming soon, my friends. All I'm going to say is stay tuned, and thank you for watching. So we'll catch you later, guys. Greg out.